Yo, what's good, everybody? It's the Green Onion. Welcome back to some more die cast stuff. Today, we're going to be restoring this poor little truck. This is a. Ah, this is dropping cars. This is a Matchbox articulated truck from 1980, I think it says. 1980, made by Lesney. And I actually have both parts of it. I have both the trailer and the cab. So that's kind of rare, I guess. Usually it's just like the trailer or you're missing the cab or you're missing the cab and you got the trailer, but I actually have both parts of this car in my junk bin. So we're gonna see what we can do to restore this thing. It still rolls great and everything. It's just the paint is in need of work and stuff. And just it needs a little bit of a refresh. It's not in too bad a shape though for being how old it is. So let's take this thing apart first of all. It's got a lot of rivets. This one, ugh, the cab doesn't, it's only got two. But the bed has five rivets on it. Or no, six rivets. No, that's that's the hitch. It's got five rivets on it that I have to drill out, so uh, it's gonna be a pain in the butt. But let's drill them out. This truck turned out to have quite a complicated uh, assembly and a lot of parts in it, to be honest. This is probably the most parts I've ever seen on a die-cast vehicle. But for the cab, it had a total of four parts. It had the little, the little cab itself. This is the um, interior, kind of. doesn't have any seats or anything. This is just like the front grille and all that stuff that fits in this little slat here. And then it has a red windshield. I'm not sure why they chose red. That's kind of weird. I've never seen a truck with a red windshield, but whatever. Then we got this little base here. This is like, uh, this goes like right underneath this, like to protect the axles or something like that. I'm, I'm not really sure why they put that in there, but it's there nevertheless. It's like a little black insert. And then we got the wheels, basic matchbox, super fast wheels from that era. And then here is the trailer, it had five rivets in it, which you can see I drilled them all out. They really wanted to keep this thing secure. And here's the bottom, here's like the base of the trailer made out of plastic and then it's one wheel here I'm actually gonna keep these wheels they're all in pretty good shape so I'm gonna keep all the wheels together uh, so the next step I'm gonna do is as always take these two metal body pieces get rid of that pesky paint so let's go over here where's my board I had my little uh, model kit box that I used for spraying stuff I don't know where I put it I think, my, I think I might have thrown it out. Whatever. This piece of styrofoam is going to have to do. So, let's put our two guys down there. Let's get the citrus strip. And let's clean this off. A nice even coat on it. Go around to the side. There. I'll let that dry overnight or something. And I'll scrub the paint off. But for now, whoops. I have too much crap in this thing. This is sort of neat over here, but got a lot of crap in my work area. <laughs> so, the next step I'm going to do is clean off all these peaches. Piece, peaches. Uh, yeah, I'm going to clean off all the peaches of the car. God dang it. Can't speak. We got this white piece here, which I'm going to dunk in some bleach to restore its shine. None of these pieces are in too bad a shape. Like I said, the truck is in decent shape. But just, they need a little bit of cleaning, new coat of paint. This windshield has been sitting in there for a while. It's got two uh, scuff marks on there from rubbing up against the top of the body. So this is going to get cleaned as well, polished it up. Same with this, I'll just give it a water bath. I won't repaint it or anything, just give it a nice water bath. And then these, I'm going to do right now, I'm just going to re-chrome the wheels with this Wolotov chrome pen. Molotov chrome pen, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to strive to do a little bit more in showing you guys what I'm doing when I'm making these. So I'm actually going to show you what I'm doing when I'm doing this. So I'm speeding this up by two times probably, but I just, you know, instead of just saying, oh, it's done, oh, it's done, I decided, you know what, people probably want to see what I'm doing, so I might as well show you. 
So this is gonna take me a while, but let's rechrome all these wheels. I'll do this. I'll just do this one for the start, and then I'll skip forward through the other ones so you can see what they all look like at the end. Let's get a nice even coat. I always go slow to prevent the chrome from getting inside of those little nooks and crannies in the wheel. So you don't got any uh, excess crap in there. So let's just chrome up the hubcap here because we're going to see that as well. And there you go. Oh, where's my camera? Good as new. This chrome pen is really nice. Highly recommend it. It's called Wolato. Molato. I don't really know how to pronounce it, but this is pretty good results. Here's what it looked like. Here's basically what it looked like before. Not too bad for a 1980s matchbox, but still definitely improve with this chrome pen. You can you can even see the results I'm putting on as you know I'm going. Gotta be very careful with this chrome pen as well, because it will bleed. It's very uh, easy to get this thing to bleed into surrounding areas. So you gotta be very still. Can't rush it. And you'll get great results. There we go. Let's just chrome up this axle as well, because that looks very crusty. There we go, that's a nice looking wheel. And also when this this stuff has to take time to dry too, it's kind of like paint. So if you touch it before it's done drying, it will smudge and get gross and stuff. So I would avoid doing that. So yeah, I'm just going to chrome up the rest of the two sets of wheels here. Basically get the idea. So I'm going to skip ahead through that now. After a nice coat of chrome, these wheels are looking ready to hit the road. Let's set them out of the way and get to cleaning these other parts in a bath of water. Let's see what that does to help them out. All right, let's put all our parts in the soapy water. Bloop, 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 bloop. Now we just gotta mix them around, make sure they're getting all clean. This is from 1980, so this is a, well, how, how, you're, how many years old? Uh, 20, 38 years. This truck is 38 years old. Let's see if we can make it look like new. You can see those little scuff marks. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get those out. Those are pretty uh, pronounced. That's pretty much ground into the plastic. But to be honest, you're not going to see that anyway because that is hidden by the roof of the truck. But it looks pretty great actually. It looks pretty shiny and new. And then for these other parts, let's dig them out of here. Put these on the towel. The window, got the base. Got the small base for the cab. And then this part here, this is the interior. I'm gonna put this in some bleach to try to restore its white shine because it looks kind of cream colored now after so many years of being out in the sun or whatever it just got a little bit you know discolored so let's dry these off and go and strip the paint from the truck good old clorox bleach can be used as a, the ultimate thirst quencher or it can be used to clean off your die cast parts let's dump it in and see if this can restore the white shine of this part don't drink bleach, by the way, kids. It's not good for you. Let's just put this over here and let it sit for a while. Meanwhile, over here, we have our truck getting ready to have its paint removed. Let's put our other parts back over here and look at that nice glossy black now from that wash. Pretty, pretty nice. So here's our truck, you can see the paint is very much buckled under the citrus strip. Pretty much, yeah, it pretty much just wants to come off right now. You can see I'm effortlessly taking it off. Let's see what happened to the trailer. I can't really tell to be honest. Actually, I'm going to hit the trailer a little bit more because I just realized it didn't hit the, didn't hit the front or the back of that thing. Because. <laughs> Yeah, 
the underside of those mud flaps. Let's let that one sit a little bit. But the truck, as far as I'm concerned, that one's ready to go. Let's get our pliers. And clean this thing off. So I didn't know this beforehand, but don't use picture strip on a styrofoam surface apparently. It eats through it. I didn't know that, but you didn't eat through cardboard, so I figured it might not eat through citrus strip, but I was definitely wrong. That is pretty nasty. That destroyed the such sort of styrofoam started eating it started eating a hole right through it. I wonder how how uh, much it's gonna eat away, but yeah, look at that paint. That was ready to come off. 38 year old paint on this truck. Look at that. Easy, easy. Old paint like this is usually pretty easy to remove. But sometimes actually it isn't. Sometimes the newer paint is actually easier than the older paint, but this truck has no problem losing its paint. Definitely does not want to be in that gross paint anymore. It wants a fresh coat of paint and some tender love and care. And that's what we do here at the Green Onion Garage. Fix up our old little buddies so they can live another day instead of being tossed in a dumpster. So yeah, you get the idea. Basically that's it. I'm gonna go clean this thing up and let's see what the trailer's doing now. What are you doing, Mr. Trailer? Somebody's home. Trailer doesn't seem to want to lose this paint. I'm gonna have to let that sit a little bit more. So I'll get back to you on that. I'm gonna clean off this body of the truck. All right, so I let this trailer soak in the citrus strip and I decided to come back a little later to check on how it was doing. And the citrus strip literally burned a hole straight through this entire styrofoam block. It just ate straight through it. So I just came down here and there's the trailer just sitting in this bottom of this pile. I'm like, oh my gosh. I guess this stuff is volatile to the styrofoam. Who knew? But whatever, let's get the stupid paint off of this trailer here and move on with this truck. Pliers. Alright, let's see how this works now. There we go. It's starting to come off a little bit better now. Even though it's kind of hard to tell since this is all silver anyway. Yeah, you can see it's starting to come off a bit. Yep, there we go. Alright, that did the trick, but it also ate through my star. I don't, I don't, oh my god, that is pretty bad. Let's get all around in there. Alright, I'm gonna go clean this thing off and get back to you with the fully stripped truck. Before I get to the truck, let's see how our little guy on the bleach is doing. Hmm. I'd say I think it improved. Let me just dry it off and let's see if it did. I guess the bleach didn't uh, fully restore it. You can see it somewhat still looks clear, uh, cream colored I mean. But there were some spots where it was a lot darker than this, like a lot more cream colored. Did eat that away. It also had some rust around this axle here and it did eat that away as well. Getting rid of it. So I think the bleach did a good job I guess. I don't know how you fully whiten this thing, but for my project, for this little truck, it's going to be good enough, and the bleach did do its job. Alright, you can definitely still see there's some bits of paint. I'm not too worried about the interior, but like underneath the mud flaps maybe, or the fenders, and some other areas have some blue paint still left over this bed as well. So basically what I'm going to do to get rid of that is use my Dremel with the um, wire brush tool or whatever you call it yeah the wire brush or whatever just like a it's like a steel wool basically steel wool brush and I'm just gonna go up and down this shine it up get rid of some of the corrosion some of the surface imperfections and I'll make the car look nice get rid of the extra paint You can already see the difference there. There's one area shined, and the rest is dirty. 
So that's basically what I'm going to be doing here. That's all you do is just go around with, with the Dremel here. Just go to the tab. Careful not to press too hard or it'll get scratch marks. But make sure to press hard enough so you can shine the surface without taking 10 years to do it. Wow, just look at that shine. With Rusties, you can never find, just kidding. <laughs> Not turning into cars here, but yeah, you can see that difference there. Looks pretty, pretty nice with that shine from the wire brush. So, not gonna bore you with too much more of this footage. It's pretty self-explanatory. Just stick, click and drag, basically, <laughs> with your Dremel. And yeah, I'm just gonna polish up the rest of this and get rid of the rest of this paint. You can see there's pitting and there's gross stuff in there still from the stripping process, so I'm going to get rid of all that. And I'll report back to you when the truck is shined up and ready to paint. Yo, welcome back everybody. We have our truck. Now it looks completely done, because it is. Because my camera is being stupid again. I had a whole thing of myself spray painting the truck in a cool, like, split color or something like that. You can see there's little flecks of metallic. Like, this truck was originally dark blue metallic. But I used teal and then as a base coat, and then I flecked it with like a blue metallic color, so it look, gives it kind of like a darker look. And then I polished up the window, reinstalled the window, gave the lettering and the headlights and some other stuff, so a little bit of color. Put the put it all back together for the cab at least. This had to be glued down because the rivets are too small. They go right through the truck if you want to screw them down. Same with these. Like look, they're so small that. You couldn't fit uh you couldn't fit the screws in there. They'd just go right through into the base of the uh, <clears throat> bucket. But anyway, here's the bucket. Spray painted that nice metallic silver. I had to buy a new paint for that, but it looks very nice. I didn't want to paint it like the regular silver I had, so I decided to go with that. So all that's left to do really on this project is reinstall this plastic insert in the rear tires. Pretty sure the rear tires can just go in like that. And this piece just goes over the top. Pretty sure that is. I'm pretty sure that's how it goes. And then you can see this little warning tailgate. I'm going to paint that yellow and black as traditional warning colors. So, I'm going to get out my yellow. This is acrylic paint. Garbage paint. <laughs> paint that, and then paint the back black, and I'll come back with the finished product, I guess. I'm going to glue this down here. So, all I'm going to do is, I'm not going to glue the axle together because otherwise it won't roll. We got our little glue. I use tester cement for plastic models. And don't worry about this down here. This is an upcoming car. This is not a custom for me. I'm going to send this into the 3D Bot Maker Racing League to see about the custom car contest. This, I was just digging through my storage bin of old cars I don't really want anymore, or just like cars I bought and I kind of regret. I'm like, eh, I don't really care about them anymore. And this Chrysler Pronto kind of caught my interest. I decided to take this and give it different wheels. I think with Hot Wheels, the larger the wheels are, like plastic wheels, I think the larger they are, the faster the car is, and also has to do with weight. So I took the wheels from this green C6 Tune Corvette. You can see, I think these are FTE wheels, faster than ever wheels. I think? I'm not sure. I'm not really sure what designates a faster than ever wheel, but I think this is it. We got those wheels, so you can see they're larger wheels. I cut out the fenders of the Pronto, but my Dremel ran out of battery juice. So I'm going to have to recharge that before I cut off the other one. But I cut off one, and then I'm going to do a base swap. Instead of this plastic base from the Chrysler Pronto that it originally came with, I am modifying this BMW M1 Pro Car base. And I'm going to put that in here because it comes with a similar... It has like an exhaust port that's sort of like a tab, because this Pronto was held together by a tab in the back instead of a rivet, so I'm going to do the, sort of the same thing back here with the, with the metal piece. And then I'm going to keep the interior the same or whatever, 
and I'll add some aesthetic features and all that. So that's for I'm gonna send that in to 3D Bot Maker. So I don't think he watches my videos, but maybe he will after I'm done uh, sending him his car and seeing it spank the competition. So yeah, I'm gonna, I'm looking forward to seeing my car on the track. But anyway, let's get back to the truck. Let's glue this thing down. Uh, yeah, just basically make sure you're test fitting it beforehand. Just don't like glue it, but put a little bit of glue on here. Make sure you get all the areas that the thing is going to be touching. It's not going to be touching underneath the axle because that's where this uh, uh, bulge is. But I'm going to glue the rear here. Just get a little bit of glue. And we're going to take this and sticker right on there. Use this to paint brush or something to tamp it down. And it should pop back in place. There you go. Get this side down a little. There. So I'm going to let that dry paint this rear thing, this rear caution thing yellow, and I think we'll be done with this truck. See you guys in a little bit when I paint the tailgate. So here we have the finished product of my truck. This is the Matchbox articulated truck from 1980. <clears throat> As you can see on the front end of the truck, uh, it's, I think it says right here, copyright 1980 Lesney, England. Matchbox articulated truck. <laughs> Got something stuck on the wheel there. But yeah, I, I just added a little more detail to it. I just gave it a little chrome accents and stuff like that. Polished up the window real nice. Just gave it a basic job, you know, just a basic restoration job. So I guess that's the end of this one. You can see there. And then I added this little warning gate on the back of the truck. As you can see there. I don't know, it just seemed like a really nice touch. So uh, I'm going to show you the before and after pics, I guess, now, and I'll see you guys in the next restoration. See you guys later.